Hey guys, welcome back to the SAP Capcom tutorial series. In the previous videos, we built a full CRUD application using Fiery, UEFI and SQLite, integrated version control with Git and hosted our code on GitHub. In part 10, we are taking a major leap by connecting your Capcom project to a real SAP HANA Cloud HDA container. This allows your app to use enterprise grade persistent storage in the cloud instead of in memory SQLite database. Before we begin, I would like to give a special shout out to Srinu David who asked this excellent question. Thank you for your comment and yes, this video is dedicated to you. To begin, open your SAP Business Application Studio and create a new project. This time, make sure to include SAP HANA Tools extension. Enter any name you wish for your dev space and choose full stack cloud application as the kind of application you are creating. Since you want to combine CAP and HANA artifacts in the same project, choose SAP HANA tools as additional SAP extension and choose SAP calculation sheet if necessary. Once all selections are completed, press create dev space. Once dev space reaches the green status of running, you can click on the name of the dev space and it will load into the editor within your browser. In the left side of the business application studio, click on the Cloud Foundry targets icon and click on the logon icon to continue configuration process. The Cloud Foundry sign-in and target window will then open in the side panel of the SAP Business Application Studio. Select the link below SSO passcode option and copy the code displayed in the new window. Now go back and paste it as your password and enter sign-in. Then click on the apply option here. Now let's create a new CAP project. Choose Node.js as the runtime and SAP HANA Cloud as your database. Choose Cloud Foundry, MTA deployment and CI-CD pipeline integration under which way to deploy your project. Also choose SAP BTP authorization and trust management service and SAP application router. The new project should be added to your workspace automatically. Create a schema.cds file under the db folder and cat-service.cds file under SRV folder as we did before. Open a new terminal to install our dependencies using the command npm install. Use the command cds add data to generate a csv file in our db folder. We will use an open source sample utility called HANA CLI to help with development tasks. From this same terminal window, run the command npm install hyphen g HANA CLI in order to install it for later use. Build the project using cds build hyphen hyphen production command. If you see the console, you will find the CDS artifacts were converted to HDB table and HDB view artifacts. You will find those artifacts in a new folder under gen db src called gen. You will now deploy those objects into the HANA database creating tables and views. We will use the SAP HANA projects view to do this. Expand the view below and you will find database connectivity there. Press the bind icon here to begin the process. 
select the first option built to an HDI container. In the next window, select the first option. Click enter to go with the default name here. After all the processing, click on the deploy icon to deploy your project. No error means our schema is deployed successfully in the HANA cloud. Click on the open HDA container option to open your HANA database explorer. Here authorize. And this will open our database explorer. Open the database and select tables. Below we can see our books table got created according to the defined schema. Click on the open data button to see our data. Since we have not inserted any records, it will be empty. Now let's go to our BAS and connect our local system with this HANA database to pass data. We will be having .env file under DB folder. This file contains the connection details to the SAP HANA cloud instance. And it was created when we performed the bind operation from the SAP HANA projects view. We can use this same configuration information from Cloud Foundry to start the CAP service layer and connect it to SAP HANA as well. Use the command CDS bind 2 your project name, full call and shared dev key to tell CAP to bind to this same HANA Cloud HDI service instance that we bound to earlier in the SAP HANA projects view. Run npm install to avoid errors. Open the package.json file in the root of your project. Change the CDS request authentication property from XSUAA to mocked so we can test with mock authentication. Now issue the command CDS watch hyphen hyphen profile hybrid. This will start the CAP service locally and use the binding configuration to connect to our remote HANA database instance. If you click on open button, you can see a books table with empty records. Since we have not inserted anything in the books table, it will return a empty set only. Now let's go to the HANA database explorer and create some records. Click on the add icon. It will result a new record with null as item values. Click on the column name and hit enter to insert new values. Don't forget to click on the save button to save the records which you have inserted. Then go to the books table and refresh it here. Here you can see the data which we have inserted in the HANA database explorer. Now let's go to our BA system and try posting values with test.http file which is nothing but the rest API. For that, create a test.http file in the root folder of your project. I'll be copying the values from our old test.http file for ease. Now it's time to post our new data to the SAP HANA cloud. Click on the send request icon to post it. The response is saying it is posted successfully. Then fetch the values using the first command that is get command. Here you can see the value is created second record is created in the HANA cloud. Let's go to our HANA cloud database explorer and refresh the page here. 
and you can see our new record is created with a UUID. That's it for this part. You have now successfully connected your SAP Capem project to an SAP HANA STA container, taking a big step forward building production ready enterprise grade applications. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. So you won't miss the upcoming videos where we take this app even further. Big thanks to Srinu David for the great suggestion and if you have a question or a topic you would like to cover, feel free to drop it in the comments below. See you in the next one.